of us, we need to start with desperation, but we need to know that we're not just going to be hungry, 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 but we will, because we are children of God, we will be satisfied. And actually the pattern in this psalm is wake up in the morning hungry and in the day and then in the dark of the night, you will be satisfied. That's the trajectory of the psalm. God is, when we look at this, God is not just to be remembered as Christians. Oh, let us remember how good God was. No, he is to be experienced. Yes, through memory, but through all of our senses. How is he to be experienced? And how are we to be satisfied? Well, just earlier, we read about the fact that we can, because of his love, in his name, we lift up our hands. Why do we do that? It's a sign of surrender. It's a sign of openness. And so because of his love, we are not closed, but we are open. And then from being open, it goes on to say that I, with singing lips, my mouth will praise you. So we don't just open our ha- hearts and our bodies, but we start exercising faith with our lips and we start praising the living God for not just what he's done, but for who he is. And then it says, on my bed, I remember you. Now, what do some of us do when we're on our beds? What we do is we stress about all the things that aren't right in our lives. But David, he has been spending his day in the worship of God, seeking not just God's things, but seeking the heart of God. And so when he's on his bed at night, he's actually not thinking about all the things he wants to change. He starts meditating upon who God is. He starts thinking about God and his glory and his sovereignty and his righteousness and his faithfulness and he says I remember you in the watches of the night and so David that they used to keep watch at night and they would have shifts where they would stay up through the night to look out for the enemy and so there's a sense here that David he doesn't sleep through the night he is keeping watch and while he's keeping watch he's not counting sheep he is remembering the goodness of God he is thinking about the ways of God I think he's probably remembering some of the stories that he read from the story of Exodus as a little boy. So not only does he have his hands open, not only is he singing with his lips, not only is he remembering through the watches of night, it says that I will sing in the shadow of your wings. Do you know what that means? It means that when things are dark and you feel like you're going through the valley of the shadow of death, you can still sing. Because it's not a valley of the shadow of death. It's the shadow of God's covering over your life. It looks dark, but it's not dark. You see, in the ancient world, a shadow, the king's shadow would would designate that the, the king's covering and the king's protection would be upon you. But it's not just the shadow of the king. It's the shadow of his outstretched arms that look like wings. And so with his outstretched arms, there's a shadow that covers our life, but it's not dark and it is not apart from God. It is actually right under the gaze and covering of Almighty God. And when you are in the shadow of his wings, even if you're in the middle of the desert being hunted by your treacherous son, you can still sing. Lift hands, singing lips, active remembering. And then I will cling to you. Your right hand upholds me. I like this because, do you know, from a utility perspective or a practical perspective, if I need to get my younger son Jude from one place to another, all I have to do is carry him against his will. And most of the time when I lift him up, he's he's like a wriggling worm, like he's just not happy being carried anywhere. But I can lift him up and get him from here to here. But let me tell you, there's something that happens when the one that lifts up my son, when he clings back to me, there's a transference that takes place. There's a communication, there's a connection, emotional, that my son, first of all, as a dad, it feels awesome that my son sometimes hugs me and he's clinging to me. And I am still, he's the one that's moving him from one place to another. That doesn't change. But what changes is his connection with me. I'm not kicking and I'm not struggling. I'm not saying, Dad, I want to walk on my own. But I'm actually connecting with my heavenly dad. 
You see, I will, David says, I will cling to you. Your right hand upholds me. So God is his protector. God is the one that upholds him. But in the midst of that, he is going to cling to him with everything he has. Grateful are the satisfied. I believe that you can exercise faith, that when you seek God, you can actually be satisfied through a life of worship. It doesn't mean that everything will change, but it means that you will experience the love of God through singing, through openness, through clinging to Him and through remembering Him in the watches of the night. And I think the final thing, not just grateful are the desperate, grateful are the satisfied, but grateful are the secure. Let's read how the, how the psalm finishes. Those who wanna kill me will be destroyed They will go down the depths of the earth. They will be given over to the sword and become food for jackals. But the king will rejoice in God. All who swear by God will glory in him, while the mouths of liars will be silent. You see, David's almost speaking to himself here. And because he's remembered the presence of the God, he has experienced the power and the glory of God in the sanctuary. And he has remembered him in the watches of the night that his, his hunger and his desperation in the morning has turned to a lot more optimism. And he remembers who he is. He remembers that he is not king by his own might and power and strategizing, but he is king by the anointing of Almighty God. And because God has made him king, he is confident that he will be a king that rejoices again on behalf of him, but also on behalf of his people. For his security, you see, when you spend time in worship of God and he changes your heart, he reminds you of your identity and reminds you of your security. He reminds you of who you are, not who you aren't. The security of his presence, the very presence that says the security that allows us to sing in the shadow of his wings. But it's also the security of our privilege that we are not just employees, but we are sons, daughters, kings, priests. And that has not been revoked despite being in the desert. And so David has a confidence that not just is he the king, but he will be the king. And the king will rejoice again, even though he's struggling to rejoice in that time. And that those that are against him will be silenced. Wouldn't it be great if we can spend less time trying to silence our enemies and more time thanking God that there is a time when our enemies will be silenced? Our security is not in our ability to manage our enemies. Our security is in the fact that God has placed our feet upon a rock and he has adopted us into his family. The psalm starts by saying, I've seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and glory. For us as Christians, after the life and death and resurrection of Jesus, I would ask you, have you seen, not just pictures of God, have you seen God in all of his glory? I would wanna say, yes, you have seen God in all of his glory. God in all of his glory looks like Jesus. There is no no more bright and beautiful and magnificent and overwhelming picture of God as we see in Jesus Christ. God in all of his glory was manifest. John 1, 14, that the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. We have seen his glory. If you wanna see the glory of God, don't look for a pillar in the sky and don't look for a cloud hovering over a worship service. Look for Jesus Christ and you will see God in all of His glory and you will see God in all of His beauty and He will drive you to your knees and saying, I have seen the Lord. Have you seen the glory of God? Yes, you have in the person of Jesus. Have you experienced His love that is better than life? Well, as Christians, we believe Romans 5 verse 5, that the love of God is poured into our hearts through the Spirit of God. And if you have the Spirit of God in you, you don't have to say, God, give me your love. You say, God, I wanna know your love that is for me. And I wanna experience it afresh through the Holy Spirit who lives in me. And have you been satisfied by being welcomed home? Well, yeah, let me tell you, there is a father 
and he has prepared a place for you. In John 14, Jesus says, I'm gonna prepare a place for you. My Father's house are many rooms. That God the Father has prepared a place for you and he knows you. And just like the story of the prodigal son, that he actually welcomes us home. And he says, I've been waiting for you. Welcome home. So you have seen the glory of God in Jesus. You have experienced his love through the Holy Spirit. And I believe you can be satisfied by being welcomed home by a loving Father. Do you wanna be satisfied? Maybe this Sunday, give up some of your list of things that you're grappling and grasping for and say, God, I just wanna go home. I wanna be in your presence. I wanna just smell and taste and see that you are God and I am not. That the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and end, who holds the whole world in his hand is for me. I wanna experience you in your sanctuary. I want to process my opposition and my persecution through the lens of your loving kindness and embrace. And in the midst of that, God will restore to you parts of your identity that you've forgotten. And he will restore to you a confidence for the season ahead. We're gonna take communion now. And at the Christian Family Centre, we have an open table. What does that mean? It means that we don't exclude people from participating in communion. Why is that? Very simply, Jesus did not exclude people that he knew were dirty, rotten sinners from the Last Supper. He did not even exclude Judas Iscariot who was gonna betray him. And I would wanna say to anyone here, if you want to come home to God, if you wanna accept what Father God has done for you in making a place for you, if you wanna say, God, your love is better than life, as you take the bread and the cup, it's a way of saying thank you for your love. Thank you for what you've done for me, Jesus. Thank you that I have seen the glory of God and He is Jesus. I wanna be grateful, not just for what you're gonna do in my future, but I wanna be grateful that the transcendent God of the universe isn't just helping me, but He has welcomed me. He isn't just fixing the gaps in my life, but He has got my life in His hand. I'm not asking God to accommodate my life. I am privileged to be part of God's life. And because I'm in His shadow, I can sing when times are good or bad. As we take the bread and the cup, I'm just gonna invite you to hold it and wait for a moment as, and then we'll eat and drink together. So if the ushers can start serving, that would be fantastic. But as you hold the, the bread and the cup, I think it would be good to say just in your heart, oh God, you're my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. I long for you. And just imagine that the deepest cravings of your heart and just remind yourself and allow the Holy Spirit to remind you that the deepest needs and the deepest yearning of your heart is not for things but it's for the one who you come from. It's the one who you're gonna go home to, the author and the perfecter of your life. Let's take a moment to reflect.